Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Tires That Deliver from the First to the Last Mile, sponsored by Goodyear. I'm Lexi Tucker, Senior Editor with Work Truck Magazine, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. I encourage you to ask questions during the webinar at any point, and we will try to address them all. However, if we do not get to yours, you will be contacted by email with a response after the event. Our presenter today is Dustin Lancey, Commercial Product Marketing Manager with Goodyear. Dustin brings seven years of industry experience in commercial truck with a special focus on the last mile delivery segment. In 2020, he led a global Goodyear LMD team to access the industry and develop the company's global strategy. His passion and enthusiasm for the commercial trucking industry will bring new ideas and insights to help your LMD fleet to lower its operating costs with Goodyear's total mobility solutions. Now, without further ado, I'll hand it over to Dustin. Thank you, Lexi, and good afternoon, everyone. Good morning to everyone out on the West Coast. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone for joining today to learn about this exciting segment in transportation last mile delivery. Uh, just a side note, we did intend to have this uh, on camera today, or myself on camera, ran into a few technical difficulties, but uh, sorry for the, the little late delay there. Um, very excited to be here today. Uh, you know, we have my picture up there with the Goodyear blimp. Um, I got to ride the blimp a few years ago. If any of you guys were thinking, uh, is that really him on uh, next to the blimp? That is me. And just a little fun fact about the blimp. If you're wondering what it is like to be up in the blimp, imagine being on a big ship out in the middle of the ocean and having it rock back and forth. The blimp kind of rocks back and forth with the wind. So I uh, just wanted to share that with you today. But, um, you know, today what we really want to discuss with everyone are the trends, the vehicles, mindsets, and tire solutions for last mile delivery fleets. But first, just a few quick reminders. Uh, we would love for you to ask as many questions as you would like during the presentation today. Um, this session will be recorded for viewing after the webinar, so if you have to drop off early or you liked the content and want to share it with others, we will have a recording of that. Um, and also, there, there will be numerous polling questions throughout the session, and we'd love to hear your engagement and your responses. So without further ado, let's kind of get into the agenda. And first, we're going to kick it off with, you know, what is last mile delivery? We're going to define that and talk a little bit about what the segment is. Then we're going to get into some of the four main trends that Goodyear sees in the market. Next, we're going to touch on the vehicle types and segments. There's light commercial vehicles, medium commercial vehicles. We'll get to that a little bit more in depth later. Look at the different LMD needs. Then we're going to take a look at the market size. Everybody on the call here, all the fleets, I'm sure uh, you'll understand that the market is growing. Your fleets are probably growing. So we're going to touch on, on how large the segment is today. And then total mobility for last mile fleets. We want to talk to you about how Goodyear provides total mobility uh, for last mile delivery customers. Next, we're going to get into the tires and retreads that help deliver. Almost to the end, why retreading, how it works. We want to introduce the concept of retreading to a lot of last mile delivery fleets. As many of you might not be retreading today, but it's a great way to save some money. Then we're going to finish with the four steps to maximize your tire investment. And then finally, we'll just kind of close. We'll start to answer some questions. And we actually have a special offer, 15% off your last mile delivery tire order today if you visit GoodyearTruckTires.com. So without further ado, we'll kind of get into what is last mile delivery. You know, last mile delivery is the transportation of customers' packages from its storage location to its final destination. There's also another segment within here that has grown very rapidly over the last few years because of the distribution effect, and that's a segment that we call super regional. So in commercial trucking, we have long haul trucking fleets that take goods from coast to coast. This super regional application uh, is taking goods from a distribution hub to distribution hub, then to the last mile or to someone's doorstep or business doorstep. No surprise that LMD really grew through the pandemic. Um, supply shortages now prompt consumers to look online first. I know uh, for myself, I went to the store the other day and a product that I believe they have always had, they did not have. I'm now purchasing that online and I'm not wasting my time going from place to place. 
So next, we're going to talk about the the different you know things that are delivered in the different segments with, within the last mile delivery fleet. We look at four main areas: uh, package parcel delivery, large package delivery, food delivery, and letter delivery. And something that we're going to touch on later is all of these different types of deliveries require not only different vehicles, they might have different uh, service needs, but also tire needs as well. And like I said earlier, no surprise here at all, but e-commerce solutions are driving the growth in last mile delivery. So we'd like to kind of start off with our first polling question. Um, I believe, Lexi, you're going to be able to, to put that out there for everyone. And the question is, what type of last mile delivery are, your, are you today uh, participating in? Package parcel, uh, large package delivery, food delivery, or letter, letter delivery? We'd love to hear your responses. All right, next, we're going to get into the trends. And we're going to talk about four main trends here today. And really, you cannot look at any transportation news uh, throughout uh, the industry without talking about uh, electric vehicles and electric vehicles um, are you know are something that are coming uh, especially very quickly in last mile delivery if you could see that image there um, it's kind of showing the path and the and the progression of where we believe uh, electric vehicles are going to start to enter into commercial trucking fleets uh, first uh, bus is a big area where um, EV is, is becoming more prevalent due to grants, government regulations, uh, and a lot of sustainability focuses of government fleets. Those, those uh, bus routes also uh, typically are fixed and stay within that current range of EVs. So it makes sense to start with uh, transportation vocations and applications that have more of a fixed route that don't have to go super far like your long haul trucking fleets, right? You're not going five, 600 miles a day. You might be going 100 miles a day within a 50, 60 mile radius. That's where we're gonna see electric vehicles really, really take off. And urban is next, and that's our last mile delivery bucket. So you could see that there, followed by regional, and then lastly, long haul. The next trend that we're gonna talk about is sustainability. Uh, you know, very related to electric vehicles. Some people might even ask, you know, why do you separate this from EV? Because sustainability and electric vehicles are only a small portion of that sustainability picture. And it's really more about the whole circular economy of goods from raw materials to disposal at the end of life. And what does this mean for last mile delivery fleets? You know, how can last mile delivery fleets help be sustainable? Of course, electric vehicles are one of them, but you know, what what is the packaging that you, uh, fleets are using? Um, you know, what are the extra transportation costs uh, that are all associated with that? It's really the circular economy or the whole picture from the, the birth of a good all the way to the final disposal of in, in the life cycle. Next, we're going to talk about, you know, the next big trend is big data. And, you know, smart everything seems to exist today, collecting so much data that, you know, quite frankly, sometimes we don't even know how to use it yet. We're just collecting so much data, so much information from our phones, from our vehicles, from all of these types of sensors that are, you know, going into our vehicles. And, you know, we're, we're also, you know, looking at different types of things to get smarter, like our tires. So that can even be coming in the future. And you're going to potentially be able to get feedback, like, real-time information about, you know, what is the temperature? How is my wear? Am I losing air pressure very fast? Do I need to pull over uh, or take this vehicle back to the yard to, to have the tire switch? So that's another thing that is impacting uh, the last mile delivery segment. And then uh, we're going to touch on some of the tire technology. So as Goodyear, we see a lot of change in future tire requests. Uh, from OEMs and our customers as these vehicles are really changing. You know, kind of a, an easy one to, to hit off is EV. You know, a lot of people are anticipating extra torque to come from these vehicles and, and really learning how, to, how does that impact tires. Uh, there is also, um, you know, a lot of future tire requests around sustainability. So how can companies like Goodyear and tire manufacturers uh, make a more sustainable product, whether it's using uh, materials such as soybean oil to 
replace petroleum or other types of things that Goodyear can help um, our customers become more sustainable. Another big thing that's changed in tire technologies is, you know, think about this. Eight years ago, Eurovans uh, or Ford Transits and Sprinters and Promasters really didn't exist in the U.S., and now they're one of the top vehicles used in last mile delivery. So that kind of leads us in to talk a little bit about vehicle types, and there's two main categories here of vehicles, um, and the first that we want to touch on is this light commercial vehicle segment. These are the types of vehicles that you're mainly seeing uh, running within urban and metropolitan areas today, delivering packages, uh, delivering goods to customers, and these are these vehicles are in class two to two to three. It includes those sprinters, small box trucks, uh, even the U.S. Postal Service type uh, small vans that they they use today. And you know the vehicle weights are really determining you know how much load, how much that those that those uh, vehicles can carry. And one very interesting thing about tires in this space is there's really a big blend of tire options, whether they're light truck tires, we would consider those con uh, consumer tires, C-type tires, which are a new tire that's kind of arose with the Ford Transit, and we'll talk about that a little later, or even a commercial option that is retreadable called ULTs, or Unisteel Light Truck. Um, and that's something that we really want to touch on a little bit later as an option for last mile delivery fleets to capture extra savings. On the, on the other hand, our second category that we're going to talk about is medium commercial vehicles, which used to really dominate the last mile delivery segment. Um, you know, you can think of the brown and the, the, the white uh, step vans that used to deliver all of our packages uh, before. Even those vehicles are starting to change a little bit, whether it's they're shifting from, uh, you know, gas to electric, they're going for smaller vehicles like the large cargo vans. But these types of vehicles, you know, they're, they're still very prevalent in last mile delivery. You know, they can carry more weight. So you might see, you know, uh, you know someone like a, a Lowe's delivering uh, refrigerators in these types of trucks, straight box trucks, um, or step vans, as I already mentioned. And the great thing about these products, they're going to cost a little bit more in investment, but in the long term, you're able to retread those. And if you're not retreading today, we'll, we'll touch on that. But um, it's a great option for last mile delivery fleets uh, to start saving some money. So next, uh, next we're going to talk a little bit about the last mile delivery segments. And there's really two big groups in this business. And I, I wanted to talk about this today uh, just so everybody can kind of understand, you know, what companies like Goodyear are kind of dealing with um, in, in, in this market space with last mile delivery vehicles. And, you know, for, as Goodyear, we have two different types of customers. We, we're going to look at OE because we, we send tires to, to OE uh, to, be, to be put on vehicles that are purchased by last mile delivery fleets. And it's a very, very exciting time in automotive as electric vehicles and all of these new technologies are arising. We're really seeing a huge shift um, and a lot of emerging OEMs kind of coming out of the woodworks, um, you know, trying to capture some of this new uh, volume and growth in last mile delivery in that vehicle space. So, of course, you know, you have your established OEMs such as Ram, Ford, uh, Mercedes, um, and, you know, those vehicles are, are probably in your fleets today. But what are we going to see in the future? We're going to see a lot of different uh, types of vehicle types, you know, some of them bringing in new innovations in technology. And you could see a couple, uh, you know, a couple examples there of, of who some of those emerging uh, OEMs are. And, you know, we're going to see a lot of new innovative, a lot of new innovation, a uh, lot of different things, and, and what does that mean? That means a lot of new different tires and, you know, servicing for those vehicles, quite frankly. Second, uh, the second segment that we're really going to talk about it today is, is you, the fleet. You know, um, in last mile delivery, um, you know, we see that there are really two separate mindsets um, in, in the last mile delivery segment. The first we're going to call the total cost of ownership, and the second, we're going to call 
a little bit more price sensitive. Total cost of ownership fleets tend to be a little bit larger. They ha might have a little bit more buying power. And really what they're doing is they're really looking long term to try to save money. So they might not uh, care as much about that initial investment. Maybe they'll pay a little bit more if they know that that investment will pay off in the long term. The other type of uh, fleet that we, that we really see in this market is a little bit more price sensitive. These typically tend to be a little bit smaller, and when smaller companies or smaller fleets, um, you know, have, uh, you know, they're operating, there's, of course, a lot more things to do. Um, people wear multiple hats. You might be the fleet manager. You might be the tire guy. Uh, you might be, uh, you know, trying to, to do help, help with breakdowns and, and any other issues that are happening within that fleet from day to day. And a lot of things end up falling through the cracks. So not only are they maybe a little bit more price sensitive, but they just can't handle all of the things that maybe some of the large fleets can, uh, can do today with, with reporting and uh, really learning about what tires and what services are best for their vehicles. So next, we're going to start to touch on what the different last mile delivery needs are. And, and once again, just wanted to talk about this because a lot of this stuff um, is going to impact the you last mile delivery fleets in the future, especially with what we see coming from OE. So what do we see coming from OE? Well, first, a lot of what is happening in OE, as I mentioned earlier, in electric vehicles, that is really driven by government regulation, um, government mandates, um, new new types of laws and rules about um, you know how how fuel efficient vehicles need to be. But OE, when an OE partner comes to Goodyear, you know, there's a bunch of different things that they, they are looking for from us. The first is, you know, they're looking for a balanced price and performance. And what does that, what does that mean for a fleet, right? Why am I even mentioning that? It's really because, you know, an OEM is trying to, to keep that sticker price on that vehicle at a certain dollar amount so there's not that sticker shock. So really, they don't want to. They might not necessarily be putting the perfect tire on that vehicle, but they're really trying to balance performance and price. Um, I mentioned this earlier. New sizes are emerging, and that could really, um, you know, make some challenges for last mile delivery fleets as it creates a lot of complexity. You might have a bunch of different vehicles with different tire sizes. It doesn't allow you to standardize. You might not be able to have good product availability in your area, um, so that is occurring. Another thing that we're seeing from a tire perspective is load carrying capacities are increasing. Um, one, because the vehicles got a little smaller, and quite frankly, the cargo vans and sprinters and transits out there today, they have some pretty small rim diameter tires, 16-inch tires, and those vehicles can be very, very tall, so that puts a lot of stress on that vehicle when you have a pretty good sized vehicle on pretty small rim diameter tires. OE is also asking for low rolling resistance to reduce CO2 emissions. Um, and low rolling resistance, you know, really means how fuel, uh, you know, how uh, much fuel economy those products have. And fuel economy is something that, you know, we are always looking at as Goodyear. I'm sure you are looking at as fleets and you're always looking for different ways to lower your fuel costs. I already talked about government regulations. And then lastly, some of the things that are coming from uh, our OE customers are they're really looking for uh, TPMS capability and, and, and tire sensors. They, they want to be able to learn more about their tires, collect that data that I talked about earlier, and be able to provide that to fleet customers, um, which provides a lot of extra value and can make last mile delivery fleets uh, you know, be more successful. Next, in the fleet bucket, the total cost of ownership, you know, what are, what are those larger fleets really looking for? And, and if you're not a large fleet, you know, potentially maybe some of the, these are the things that maybe you could potentially strive for, you know, in your spare time, of course. But, uh, you know, these are some of the things that maybe you could start to work on or at least in some fashion, you know, start testing out within your fleet. So, the, you know, the one thing that we hear from our customers all the time is, hey, it's not just, uh, around black tire that they're looking for. They need the product, the service, and 
to tire management solutions um, to help their fleets run more efficiently. The next thing that they're looking for is retreadability with premium casing. And we're going to touch on this later when we get on uh, retreading, but um, making that initial investment on a premium product such as Goodyear, um, you know, that product and that tire casing, and by tire casing, for anyone that doesn't understand what I mean there, is once a tire is worn out, and if it's a commercial truck tire, that tire can be retreaded. That casing actually has value, and we're able to put a brand new tread on it and have you run that tire once again to life. So uh, we'll touch on that a little bit later. Another thing that they're looking for is predictive analytics and reporting. The more data that we collect, the better decisions our fleet customers are going to be able to make about their tires, uh, identify issues before they happen, reduce road service breakdowns. So there's a lot of different things that we can do from our perspective to collect information on the tires and the health of our tires and our fleet. Um, and a lot of the big companies are probably already doing this. Next is improving driver efficiency. Um, you know, this one's a really interesting one, and especially right now, everybody, of course, is really struggling to uh, hire people, <laughs> whether you're in manufacturing, whether you're in transportation, or in the food industry, everybody is struggling to find good people, and, and what, what happens when you have to go out and maybe find some new people all the time? They're not used to the vehicles, um, you know, they might not be as efficient, and quite honestly, what happens a lot is that if the drivers are inexperienced, they're not used to driving those types of vehicles, the tires actually go through a lot more stress, stresses such as curbing uh, and different scrubbing that can really impact the sidewall and uh, ultimately impact the, the overall tire life of those products. They're also looking for a 24-7 dealer network to keep them up and running. Uh, a lot of the larger companies are having sustainability targets and initiatives. Uh, you know, I've seen commercials over the last few weeks of some of the major companies that have, you know, a, a plan to reduce CO2 emissions or be, you know, carbon neutral by 2050 or 2060. Um, you know, sustainability is something that a lot of uh, the large fleets and, and big corporate companies are, are very serious about, and it is coming. And it's going to change a lot, um, whether it's the vehicles or even the products that we're using. And then, once again, uh, maximize uptime, you know, trying to take care of the tires so that way when that vehicle is out on the road, it is making deliveries and not stopped uh, waiting for someone to go change out uh, vehicles for them. And then for the more price-sensitive customers, you know, what, what we're kind of seeing is, you know, there's a lot of product offerings in this space. Um, a lot of the different tire manufacturers have products that are, are lower cost. And quite, quite honestly, it could be very overwhelming for a last-mile delivery fleet who maybe has 10 vehicles or less on selecting the right tire. You might not be going with one tire manufacturer. You might buy, you know, whatever that deal of the day is that your dealer kind of recommends. Uh, so we're going to talk about a little bit of that later, how standardizing your tires uh, can actually help make you more efficient. There's a lot of high OE pull-through here, and... And I, I put this here, and I wanted to kind of touch on this concept. Uh, to understand pull-through, it's, it's basically whatever comes on your vehicle today. Um, let's say it is a good year. Um, when, when that tire is worn out, you go to your dealer and say, I just want you to put on whatever I had before. And, um, you know, we want fleets to understand that what sometimes what, what came on your vehicle before might not be the right tire for your fleet, for your application. And a great example is, you know, there are products out there that uh, are, are that feature uh, performance items like Three Peak Mountain Snowflake, which which is a winter traction rating. And maybe you're in the northern states and you need that extra traction in all those positions uh, in the four wheel positions of a, a Sprinter van or a, a a large cargo van. And you know. If you don't understand that there's those types of options out there, you know, you don't want to necessarily just replace the tires that came on the vehicle with that. There could be a better option that, one, it's going to make everyone safer. Your drivers are going to be more happy. You might have to pull less people out of the ditch in the wintertime, um, and ultimately you're going to get more uh, out of your tires. And then very specific with, you know, short-term and leasing and rental, um, you know, these types of 
customers, you know, they're looking for a great tire at a good price. They're also looking at tire sensors, and they, they really need systems to help monitor all of those vehicles throughout, uh, throughout their fleet because the, those vehicles uh, could be, you know, in multiple customers' hands every week. And, um, you know, from there, you know, we're, we're able to help them with a bunch of different things that Goodyear can provide. So next, let's get into the LMD market size and, you know, how big is this market in North America and really what is going to happen in last mile delivery moving forward. So first, for us to kind of estimate what the market size is, we have to look at the car park data, which gives us a pulse on how many light commercial vehicles are operating in North America today. And if you don't know what car park is, car park is basically a statistic or a number that we gather from uh, the U.S. government that says, here's how many vehicles are operating within this segment today. So not the vehicles that are sitting at, in the, at the dump waiting to be crushed up and, and recycled. These vehicles are actually in operation today. Fleets are using them. Customers are using them. Individuals are using them. So there's 23 million vehicles in this last, in this light commercial vehicle segment operating today. And within that light commercial vehicle segment, there's multiple different uh, applications, including last mile delivery, but a lot of these large uh, cargo vans and sprinters are also being used for, for other things because, you know, there's a reason your fleets are using them. They are very versatile. They're great on fuel. They're easier to drive than a, a step van or a small box truck. You don't need a CDL uh, to operate them. So what you're seeing is, hey, a lot of construction and field service, uh, you know, fleets are starting to use them. Uh, they're being used as people movers. I was in a gorgeous uh, Mercedes Sprinter the other day. Um, you know, when I was traveling, I was going to a conference, had TVs. I mean, I felt like I... I was on, uh, you know, I was a celebrity, the, the leather seats. I mean, they're great vehicles to also use as people movers. And then lastly, we're also starting to see them in emergency response and police. So these vehicles are, are catching on, and it's probably why if you guys go and try to purchase any of them, you can't find them anywhere because there's so many different applications for them, and uh, everyone is really adopting them. So why does this really matter for last mile delivery. So of those 23 million light commercial vehicles that are operating in North America today, we estimate that about 6 or 7% of those are actually operating last mile delivery. So those are the fleets that are actually, you know, you guys today, 6 to 7%, and that equates to about 1.5 million last mile delivery vehicles today. And why is this important to you? You know, we know this segment is growing. Uh, it is supposed to grow 10% um, from 2019 to 2027. Uh, that is a pretty, pretty significant growth, and I would say it's probably the highest growth in the commercial trucking space. And the reason that's important to you is not only is your fleet going to grow, you're going to need to find more vehicles, more drivers. You know, your companies are going to expand. You potentially are going to be delivering more on a day-to-day -day basis and also your competition is going to be growing as well. So you need to find any way that you can to help lower your cost per mile, help save on tire spend, and quite honestly, get the best uh, ROI and invest in the right things today to position your fleets to win in the future. And one way that we, we believe that you can do this is by aligning with a tire manufacturer like Goodyear because Goodyear has a total mobility solution for its customers. And what do I mean by total mobility? You know, you can go in and purchase a tire from a dealer any day. That is just a, you know, a round black tire, one and done. You cross it off the list, you got your tire, and that is it. You know, what we're saying today is there's a lot more involved than just, just tires in service. Um, but it does start with those trusted products. So, you know, to have total mobility, you need to have the trusted products. You need to have that premier dealer network, that trusted advisor 
that dealer that you know you can rely on. If you are in a pinch and you pick up the phone and, and you need four tires right now or you are stuck on the side of the road, you need that dealer to get you in when, when you have an issue and to really rely on them. And that is a big piece of, of total mobility. And then lastly, um, you know, we're going to touch on this a little bit more later, but complete tire management. If you are not taking the opportunity and some of the resources out there with your dealer network to start to monitor your tires or check your air pressure on a regular basis, you know, you, you're really doing yourselves a disservice and kind of opening up a lot of opportunities for issues to happen down the road. And what Goodyear recommends is developing a tire program, and each fleet is different. Each fleet's tire program is different, but there's a suite of tools, there's a suite of solutions out there that are very, very easy, even for the, the small 10, uh, you know, 10 vehicle last mile delivery fleet a lot of things that you know you can really do easily or have your dealer even do for you without a cost to help monitor your tires and really help you build that tire program. So next, you know, as I mentioned earlier, tire technologies are changing and you know this is really impacting the types of tires that are available for last mile delivery fleets. And today we're going to talk about two different rim diameter tires that are most prevalent in last mile delivery. Um, first for LCVs, we're going to talk about 16 inch products. And these 16 inch products um, are really featured on a lot of the large size cargo vans. And Goodyear has a complete lineup of LT, which is light truck, C type, which is a newer type of size that came over with the Ford Transit once it was developed in Europe, and I'll touch on that a little bit later. And also ULT products um, in all of those popular sizes for last mile delivery. And this space is truly a hybrid of, you know, a consumer type vehicle or a commercial type application. So there are both retreadable and non-retreadable options in this space. For the non-retreadable options, let me touch on light trucks. So as these vehicles are starting to get higher load carrying capacities, um, you know, a lot more different requirements are coming from them. A new size has kind of emerged, dubbed the C-type tire. And if you see a tire size, uh, one of the most prevalent uh, C-type tire sizes are the 235-65R16C. There's that C on the end of that tire size. That means it's a C-type tire. That tire was that developed um, actually in Europe and then adopted by uh, a lot of uh, fleets in the U.S. and a lot of vehicle manufacturers in the U.S., especially in this cargo space, to really help with the stability of the tire as, once again, those vehicles are very, very tall potentially. They could have heavy loads, and these tires are very tiny. So those types of tires were, were actually made to help be more durable and, and carry a lot of the extra loads that the last mile delivery vehicles are demanding. So if you're using LT tires today, we have very, very similar options in ULT. Um, and what do I mean by that? So we, share, we do share some sizes in uh, both consumer and commercial, and this is why I called it a hybrid earlier. There's this space where there, there's definitely a crossover between, hey, you have two different options if you're a last mile delivery fleet. You can go and purchase the non-retreadable uh, LT or C type tires, which quite honestly are gonna be less expensive for you, and that might be what you're purchasing today. Or if you're trying to lower your cost per mile, there's all of these retreadable options or ULTs um, that a lot of companies have, and, and we have two of them. We also have them in, in multiple different tread designs. So once again, if you do need a little bit extra traction, um, you know, because you, you deal, uh, you know, with wintry conditions, you're up in the mountains, um, you know, potential muddy conditions, um, you, you know, sometimes you need that open shoulder drive tire to help help get you through and help to get that little bit of extra traction. And the great thing about ULTs is, once again, if it's a commercial product that is retreadable, there's value in that casing. 
when you purchase a commercial retreadable ULT, you know, you are, you are getting value. You have a premium casing that can last um, multiple retread cycles and ultimately lower your cost per mile. So you might pay a little bit more up front for that 16-inch ULT, but next time you go, uh, once that tire is worn out and you need to have it retreaded, that retread's probably half the cost, and it's probably uh, in, uh, you know, less expensive than that non-retreadable option anyway. So you're able to get more out of your investment if you go with a commercial product. But I, I just wanted to explain this space. I know this can be um, you know, a little confusing, and I'd, I'd love to open up any questions uh, if there are any here. Excellent. Okay, we will so go what, ahead and address oh, some of these questions, if you would like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's take a little break, and uh, it'll give me a second to grab a glass of water real quick, but um, if you have any questions, you shoot them off to me. I'd love to start taking just a couple. We'll do two or three, and then we'll move on. Absolutely. I just want to make sure some of these get uh, addressed for the audience. Let's see. Uh, the first we have is we have a mix of delivery trucks and smaller vans. What are the most important things we can do to lower our cost per mile? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, there's going to be four points that I'm going to touch on, and I don't want to I don't want to spoil my thunder um, or my splash at the end, but um, at the end of this presentation, we're going to finish with four ways you can maximize your investment, and I'm going to give those to you. If you're not doing them today, uh, you'll definitely want to start doing them or find a tire manufacturer or dealer who can help you deal them if you don't have any time. So I don't want to spoil my, my ending, so I'll, I'll hold off for now, but uh, great question, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Certainly. And then uh, one more. I'm not currently running any <clears throat> uh, any retreaded tires on my fleet. It feels like a big, expensive change. Where do I get started? That's a great question. And, you know, a lot of smaller fleets, um, you know, first of all, you know, have a bad perception of retreads. Um, you know, a lot of us, when we're driving down the highway and we see what we call the, the alligator backs lying, lying on the side of the road, the first thing that everybody thinks is that is a retreaded tire, and uh, that is not actually a retreaded tire. 90% um, of the time, that is an over-underinflated tire. So a the perception of retreads is, is already bad, but we're going to talk about a type of retreading that Goodyear does a little bit later called unicircle, which can help build some of that confidence back. But um, back to the question a little bit, you know, first I would I would start with, my trusted advisor or local dealer and have the conversation with them to say, hey, you know, here's what I'm currently running today. Um, you know, do, are there commercial options that I can switch to to start the retreading process? And then they can kind of uh, walk you through what that looks like. Um, once again, later in this presentation, I'm going to go through what that retreading process is. And it may seem very cumbersome, but really, um, you know, if you work with a, a tire manufacturer or dealer, um, you know, who, who believes that, uh, you know, wants to help you and wants to help you save money, um, you know, that is the best way to get started. And, and I'll talk a little bit later about what that retreading process is. I think it will make you feel a lot more comfortable about kind of dipping your toe in the water, at least trying some retreads out and uh, seeing how they perform. So back to back to tires. So uh, you know, I talked about this 16-inch space today, and one way to look at it, um, or you know, one way to help identify, you know, what types of tire options are out there, at least from a Goodyear perspective, are available for my vehicles. We created this cargo van application guide. And, you know, this is a very handy guide, which, uh, you know, I'll give you a place where you can go find this later that can kind of help you determine based upon the, uh, the brand and the model of uh, cargo vans that you have, what options are available. And as you can see, um, for a lot of them, you do have non-retreadable and retreadable options. So, um, you know, you'll be able to, 
take a look at this a little bit later, but there's a lot of sizes that do cross over between consumer and commercial um, that you do have the opportunity to retread. And if you do have that tire size, you know, I, I, I welcome you to, to at least investigate uh, to see if that really does make sense for your fleet. So next, the next big uh, bucket of products in this space for medium commercial vehicles are 195s. And, uh, you know, these types of products can be seen on a lot of the step vans and smaller box trucks that are out there today. And these are commercial products only, which are all retreadable. Um, so, they're, you know, they're going to be a little bit more costly than maybe your LT or C type tires in, in consumer, but still less expensive or more expensive than the ULTs as well um, because they are a little bit larger rim diameter. And there are a bunch of different products available here in this space in both all position and drive tires. And I mentioned uh, Three Peak Mountain Snowflake earlier. This is something that, um, you know, if you're in, um, you know, inclement weather, snowy conditions, you need a little bit extra traction. Finding tires with Three Peak Mountain Snowflake certification, which is this little mountain with the snowflake on it, um, you know, might be something that you should start to look into. Um, and basically what that means is those tires have been tested um, in snowy conditions to, to have enough traction to excel um, in different types of snowpack, ice, and even mud. So, um, you know, something to maybe look, look into there. But really, depending on the performance value and price that you're looking for, uh, Goodyear has three separate options. Um, you know, in all position and drive from the premium Fuel Max RSA and RTD ULTs to the 647 and 622 RSDs. And we also have Kelly products as well. So we, we, all, we do offer multiple price points in premium, mid, and economy uh, for all of our customers. So, you know, if you want to start maybe uh, thinking about retreading or you just, you know, want, want a lower cost product, we do have uh, various options there. And then once again, since all of these products are retreadable, um, there's multiple retread uh, types uh, in all position, in drive, uh, in various tread designs, in both Precure and Unicircle. And I'm going to pause there and, and kind of talk just a little bit about the two different types of retreading that's available from a Goodyear perspective. So first, Precure. Um, Precure is a process that once a tire has been worn to the end of tread life, it gets sent to a retreader. The tire is buffed, which means all of the old tread is removed, and they basically take a flat tread, uh, Precure flat is what we call it, um, and wrap that around the tire. Um, it gets uh, almost stapled together, gets put into a, a bag, a pressurized bag, put into a, an oven where that product is cured, and then it comes out like a brand new tire. Uh, that is the pre-cure process. For the unicircle process, which is a very unique process uh, specifically by Goodyear, those products um, are spliceless, which means it doesn't have that, uh, you know, it doesn't have that uh, space where the product is stapled together. Th these products are actually almost like a rubber band. So imagine a, a casing on a machine with a rubber band that will stretch out around the casing. The tread will be placed over the casing and then the forks would be removed and you have a spliceless retread um, around that, uh, that tire and there's a lot of benefits that come from Unicircle. Um, if you have those questions, we can uh, you know, touch those at the end, uh, but it really also helps with driver perception um, because there is no splice in that tire. So why retreading? There's a bunch of different things that I'm going to mention here, and, you know, I, I do want everyone to, if you have not considered retreading before, to give it a shot. You know, there's a, the first thing, you know, retreads are using matching tread designs a lot of the times, and, and quite honestly, similar or the same compounds, and that really helps drive similar performance from new tire to retread. I mentioned this before. If you buy a premium tire, your premium casings are assets. So if, even if you're not retreading, you can sell your tire casings back to a dealer who will pay you for those. So if you're not getting that right now, make sure you, you are. 
Obviously, it lowers the overall cost per mile. We talked about that. You have your initial tire cost, which might be, uh, you know, two hundred dollars, and your retread is half of that, about a hundred. So, uh, helps lower your cost per mile. It's a great way for a fleet or a company to start to, you know, help to be more sustainable. You know, there's less petroleum used in retreads, um, less tires and casings to the landfill. So, it's a great way. Uh, to help with that sustainability focus. Um, I already mentioned it's a fraction of a cost as new tires and very comparable tire performance to new tires. The chart on the right or the images on the right kind of briefly explain um, the retread, uh, you know, what happens when you retread and, and, and how that really uh, looks from a price scenario. So, Although you might pay a higher initial acquisition cost for the commercial product, the retreads will be about half of that cost, and throughout the life cycle of that casing helps to lower your cost per mile. So instead of going to buy a new tire, new tire, new tire, new tire every time, you're buying four new tires right up front, and then once those are worn out, then you're buying retreads, which are half the cost. And you know, quite honestly, if you sit down and do the math, it is a savings. There's also some other benefits with commercial products, which I haven't mentioned today, but your durability is better. Um, commercial products have a steel steel casing, so it can take a lot more of that scrubbing and curbing that a lot of those vehicles are seeing today and you know, last a, a longer cycle. So next, I, I kind of wanted everybody to help understand what that retread process is. And, you know, this is a very simple way to look at it. So back to that question earlier, you know, what's, you know, how do I get started? Um, you know, first, you have to get started, you have to be using commercial products. And once those commercial products um, are worn out, um, or what we call, you know, driven down to their pull points, um, and you can identify, you know, if a tire is at a pull point by doing regular inspections or by using some of our tire management solutions, which I'm going to touch on before the end. And, you know, once those tires reach to the pull point, then you're going to send those tires to uh, a Goodyear retreader or any retreader to be retreaded. The next step, the retreader is going to take those tires, they're going to buff them, they're going to put a brand new tread on them, they're going to bake them back in the oven, um, and they're going to come out looking like brand new. And the, then those like new finished retreads are going back to service and the cycle just keeps on continuing until that casing is deemed non-retreadable. And in last mile delivery, you know, typically, depending on how severe the application is, we have seen up to four retreads per that casing. So the more retreads you can get out of a casing, the lower your cost per mile is and the more your fleet is going to save. So. Uh, you know, this is this is kind of my uh, second to last slide, but um, I really wanted to leave everybody who joined today with four steps to help maximize your investments. And the first one is monitor air pressure on a regular basis. And this may seem like a, a no-brainer, but we see a lot of fleets, small and large, still not doing this today. And whether that is doing fleet surveys or having even drivers check the vehicle's tire press pressure, running tires at their optimal air pressure can provide fuel efficiency benefits, tread life benefits, and reduce the chance of any breakdowns happening. Um, you know, for everyone on there, if you don't know what the, the air pressure needs to be on the tires that you're running, um, there's a plate on the driver's side, a uh, manufacturer's plate that always contains the optimal tire pressure and inflation pressure. And, you know, one reason why this is so important, a study done by the Tire Maintenance Council a few years ago found that consistent underinflation of up to 20% below the recommended level can increase the rate of tr tread wear by 25%. So if you purchase a tire for $100, and you're running those tires consistently at 20% below air pressure, you just threw away $25. So that's why it is so important. And then it also can reduce the life of a tire by 30%. So as that tire wears, it will actually wear faster and faster and, you know, cause the, the tire to wear. 
In addition, under inflation, as little as 10 PSI below the recommendation was shown to reduce fuel economy by about 1%. And if you have 10, 20, 30 vehicles, 1% of your fuel cost over a year can be thousands of thousands of dollars. So this gets to our last polling question. Um, and it is, do you currently monitor or uh, take air pressure, tread depth, or monitor condition on a regular basis? And I guess by a regular basis, we'll say at least once a month right now. So we'd love to hear your responses. How many of you are currently monitoring your tires? The next step to maximize investment is to visually inspect your tires for issues. Look for how the tire is wearing and whether it's wearing evenly. Look for any chunks or gashes in the sidewall that could have been caused by curving or scrubbing because this will reduce your overall tire failures. I talked about this earlier, but inexperienced drivers tend to uh, you know, damage tires more often, and these inspections are all about catching the issue before it gets to the point where there's a roadside breakdown or an issue on the road, potentially an accident because the tire failed and resulting in missed delivery. So always go out there and visually inspect your tires. And if you don't have it, if you don't have time to do it yourself, work with a local trusted dealer that will help do that for you. The third thing, collect data on product use. And I talked about big data earlier. Goodyear is doing a lot of investment and concentration in this space. Um, taking all of this information that we collect by inspecting tires to help identify future issues before they happen. And a great way that we do this is by using a tool called uh, Goodyear Tire Optics. Tire Optics is a digital inspection tool set that Goodyear dealers and our fleet account managers use to help make the tire inspection process more efficient and accurate. Um, the device actually takes um, very accurate tread depth and uh, air pressure readings. It uploads them to the cloud where we can actually send fleet customers and last mile delivery fleets uh, health reports on their, uh, on their vehicles and on their tires. Uh, ultimately, we can send you alerts to say, hey, you might want to fix that tire before there could potentially be an issue. And lastly, um, find a trusted advisor. I, I talked about this throughout my presentation, but um, you know, finding that trusted advisor that one can help you do some of the things that maybe you're not doing today to inspect tires, to get the most out of your investment, to provide the right recommendations, uh, to put the right tires and tread designs on your vehicles. You need to find a tire advisor, and Goodyear has a commercial tire and service network of over 2,300 locations, including 200 company-owned stores. And we also have a whole uh, suite of consumer um, locations as well for those non-retreadable products. So you can either go, uh, if you're, you're interested in the consumer products, uh, I'll give you a website here a little bit later where you can go find those or the commercial products as well. So with that, we are just about to wrap up, and I know we're getting very, very close to, to the end of time, uh, the 3 o'clock time frame here on the East Coast, um, but we wanted to be able to still take some questions. But I promise this at the beginning, and uh, I'm going to offer it now. For everyone on the call today, we do have a special offer on all of Goodyear's last mile delivery products that we discussed, um, and we want you to take advantage of this offer. So uh, please visit GoodyearTruckTires.com slash last mile and select the small fleet option. From there, you'll be able to scroll down. You'll be able to find some of the tires that we discussed today. Select your tire size. Put it in your cart, and you will have a 15% discount applied to your cart automatically uh, for that purchase. Also found on this page, GoodyearTruckTires.com slash last mile, um, is more information about products, that cargo van application guide that I talked about, and um, there's also a, uh, an inquiry form on there that if you liked what you saw today, you have more questions about tires, about tire management, about dealers, um, you can fill out that form, um, you know, say that you were in the last mile delivery webinar and we will get you to a Goodyear representative that can help answer all of your questions. So with that, uh, 
thank you everyone for joining. Sorry for the technical difficulties early on. Like I said, we wanted to be on video. Um, we helped us, uh, you know, we're running a little bit late because of that, but at this time, uh, we would like to take any other questions that are out there. Excellent. So we do have a couple more. Uh, the first is, like every other fleet, it's hard to get experienced drivers. It seems vehicles and tires taking a beating from the inexperienced drivers. How can Goodyear products and services help with that problem? Yeah, so uh, very good question. And, you know, it, it first of all, it depends what types of, of vehicles you're driving. And I'll use cargo vans as the option because most of the last mile delivery fleets are operating uh, large cargo vans. One way that you can um, help maximize your investment or help those tires uh, last longer are by going with a commercial product because that casing is steel steel is what we call it. Um, it has different steel plies versus the light truck or C-type tires, which are fabric steel. So commercial products are more durable. Uh, they can withstand and take um, a much bigger beating than some of those consumer options out there. So I would look into, um, you know, making that investment or at least looking into potentially using some of those ULP uh, products that do exist that are retreadable today. Excellent. And then our last question is, are unicircle suitable for steer tires? So, you know, it's a it's part of a practice um, throughout the industry that a lot of fleets do not uh, retread, um, you know, the steer, the steer position. And quite frankly, it is up to the fleet. We do have some last mile delivery customers out there who are retreading all four of their wheel positions, steer and drive axles with unicircle retreads and pre-cure retreads. Um, so it, it, it is acceptable. It's really based upon the fleet preference and uh, the comfortability. Um, but this fleet that is doing it has a lot of data, a lot of research, and the drivers don't have an issue with it. So I would say that, you know, it, it, it is possible. Um, and, you know, one of the things that you will want to do is to, the more you can take care of those tires, the better they will perform in both steer and drive axle positions. Wonderful. Well, that is all of the time that we have for today, but anyone who asked a question that wasn't answered, Dustin and Goodyear will be following up via email to answer the questions individually. We hope that you all enjoyed today's webinar, and again, I want to thank Dustin and Goodyear for today's presentation. I also want to mention that this webinar will be available on demand on the Work Truck Magazine website at worktruckonline.com webinar. Thank you all, and have a great day.